Hello everybody, this is Scott, your Northwest Geology Guy, and today we're going to talk about Mount Rainier. Is it just a beautiful, majestic uh, backdrop of uh, Western Washington, or is it the most dangerous volcano in America? And it's the latter, or actually it could be both. But uh, today we're going to talk about the dangers that it uh, poses from Mount Rainier, how they occurred in the past, and how they very well could uh, happen again. I don't like that either, damn it. Hello everyone. Welcome to the Northwest Geology Guy. My name is Scott, an amateur geologist for the better part of 35 years. And today we're going to take a look at Mount Rainier. Is it just a beautiful, majestic uh, view of uh, Washington State? Or is it a most dangerous volcano in the United States. Well, actually it's both, but we're gonna look at it today and you're gonna learn a lot of things about Rainier that you didn't know and the danger that it possesses. Now here's a view of Mount Rainier and the Puyallup Valley. And um, you can see, if you look closely, Mount Rainier is up here at 14,410 feet. And this is just, you know, maybe 100 feet above sea level. So any uh, melting of the snow from a minor eruption or to a failure uh, of the epiphase of the mountain is going to come down in a lahar and bury this like it has in the past. What you're seeing here is the Puyallup River Valley developed many years after a major lahar, which is a, a mud flow consisting of rocks, ash, gravel, dirt, boulders, um, that's developed this land down here that we built upon. Currently we have about uh, a quarter million people living in harm's way from Mount Rainier. And almost all of it, if not entirely, all in Western Washington. Since there's a, a ridge that stops anything coming from the Cascades going into Eastern Washington, but uh, we'll go ahead and discuss that tonight. So sit back, relax, and uh, take notes. Now here's a picture of uh, the hazard map from uh, Rainier uh, for lahars and mud flows. And uh, it kind of shows you here that uh, it all originates from the, around the top half of the mountain where we have altered rock that's gone from solid hard rock to a mushy clay and breaks apart really easy. And that is the most uh, danger we face living in this area. Not so much a, a, a big uh, St. Helens eruption type of an event, but this shows uh, where the Lahars would go to, all the way down here to Commencement Bay and uh, Tacoma Fife area. And uh, if you got to pay special attention to the key over here because um, it will tell you what every color is and uh, what it's doing. But as you can see, <clears throat> excuse me, that uh, Lahars follow the river cha channels all the way down uh, to the lowest point till it meets the commencement bay in Puget Sound. But... Uh, you won't generally see anything else uh, in areas that don't have the uh, the river valleys down here that lead all the way down into the lower uh, elevations. Now here's a good uh, picture of a lahar that's uh, just uh, ending. Uh, this way you can see more of what's in it. There's much more cooler uh, pictures and videos of lahars coming down, um, but this gives you an idea of what's actually in them. Um, anything that can be moved will be part of the lahar. Um, it's made up of rocks, dirt, um, boulders, trees, anything that uh, can be moved by it will come with it. And to describe the consistency of them is like liquid concrete coming down. And after it uh, is done, the remnants of it is like chiseling concrete. Um, it's basically some of the same ingredients that was made in uh, ancient uh, concrete by the Romans. Um, 
and you can see here that the rocks just stop in place sometimes you will see boulders and i mean big boulders uh suspended in the side of the wall uh, of a uh, ancient lahar and uh so they come down and as quickly as they come down they back up and it freezes when the lahar stops that's why these don't have time to settle down into the bottom of the lahar uh suspends them right in uh mid stride of where they were going and uh 5600 years ago the uh osceola mud flow um happened from where the northeast section of uh, rainier had collapsed from the altered rock on the northeast side and uh it produced probably the biggest lahar that we've uncovered so far and mount rainier is actually still a fairly young volcano their lifespan in the cascades is only two million years per volcano and uh rainier is only five hundred thousand years old that's uh they've carbon dated it and um so it's still a relatively new volcano but we've already found 55 separate lahars that have come from mount rainier and the osceola was one of the 55 and we didn't even know that uh until people were starting to geologists were digging trying to map the area and found out that the where they've been standing on looking at the mountain they found the lahar but hadn't put two and two together because they didn't know where it came from so uh this is kind of like two separate videos i put together um because the osceola uh, lahar is a very interesting story on its own but what i'm trying to do is teach you guys uh the dangers uh that mount uh, rainier possesses but man it's sure a beautiful thing to look at uh when it's clear now here's another image uh that's taken uh of another hazard that uh, the mountain possesses is glacial outbursts and uh, brief flows and this happened back in august 13th of 2015 where we had one coming out of uh, uh the south of tahoma glacier and uh what happens is there's melting uh underneath the glacier and it builds up a little pocket of uh, very cold water. And when the force of the water uh, becomes greater than what the glacier can hold back, it just bursts out and you have an instant uh, lahar um, with force behind it. So all that water gets released at one time and starts picking up rock debris, uh, dirt, uh, remnants of ash, tephra, everything from the mountain and sends it on down uh, the side of the mountain uh i remember that quite clear that was a pretty big event uh but you know that's the kind of things i look for uh i don't know the average person may have heard it may have not but that's why i added it in here for uh our locals here and for people uh outside the state of washington okay let's take a look at uh what's made the mountain the way it is it's andesitic lava which has a high silica content of around 75% silica, 25% uh, uh, basaltic lava. And that forms at the convergent plate boundaries. And that's like the Cascadia subduction zone where we have the Wanda Fuca plate along with the Explorer and the Gorda plate that's being subducted underneath the American plate. And it starts to go down to depth where it starts to melt into the lithosphere and um, it's mixed with a little bit of water that seeps in from the ocean at the subduction zone and it starts to melt the lava it's getting it thinner hotter helping the magma rise to the to the surface and also helps melt some of the uh, the continental crust underneath uh to help make to pull the silica out of the continental plate and sends it up to the to the surface now the type of eruptions that happen at mount uh, rainier are not like uh, kilauea and other volcanoes uh, that are not on the subduction zone in the ring of fire 
There are very violent and explosive eruptions like Mount St. Helens. M Mount St. Helens is in the same uh, Cascade Range as Rainier. It's, uh, they kind of like to call it the little sister of Rainier. And um, so our eruptions here are very violent. Um, and we've had thousands of eruptions over the 500,000 years uh, that Rainier has been here. And Rainier uh, was created on top of uh, the remnants of ancient volcanoes. We've had here over 40,000 years of having uh, the Cascade Mountain Range. So it's kind of like building a new city on top of an ancient city. Okay, here's a prime example of how uh, lava flows from Mount Rainier have taken place. They come uh, with a more of a minor eruption, not so much an explosive eruption, but the andesite lava starts coming down the side of the mountain uh, very slowly and ends not very far from uh, the mountain itself. And 95% or greater of the eruptions from um, Mount Rainier have been contained inside the National Park. There's only been a, a couple, three times that it's exceeded uh, the boundary of the park, and that's just minuscule uh, feet beyond the park. So you can safely say that almost all of the lava flows from Mount Rainier have stayed inside the park. And uh, I got to go up there and get a piece of it. I have some andesite lava, but I'd like to have some from Rainier. Okay, here's a great example uh, of what we've had a lot of from uh, Rainier in the past. This isn't Mount Rainier, but it shows uh, a good illustration of uh, what we could expect to see maybe in another uh, eruption from Mount Rainier. It last erupted in 1894 into 1895, but uh, it was a very minor eruption. It did uh, produce some ash and uh, steam from it, but very little lava, if any. But I thought I'd show you guys, uh, you know, some of the types of uh, eruptions we have had. Okay, here's a picture of a of a piece of uh, andesite lava, and you can see here it's uh, pretty dense. Uh, the crystals in it uh, show that it's been sitting down in the magma chamber for a while, because as longer uh, the lava sits inside the magma chamber, it allows the crystals inside the magma. To start to grow and if it's fresh lava that just uh, enters the magma chamber and exits it these would be very minuscule little white dots since they haven't had a chance yet uh, for the crystals to grow okay now here's a, a good example of an andesitic volcano like Mount Rainier in St. Helens, Baker, Glacier Peak, um, Mount Adams and so on um, it starts out here with the subduction zone, with uh, the Wanda Fuca plate being subducted. It starts to melt, mixes with the water, comes up, melts the crust, and eventually uh, reaches the surface out of the volcano. Now here's a good indication uh, showing uh, of a lava eruption. You see it's not a big flow like we've seen from uh, the last eruption at Kilauea, but it comes down, and this is like a mountain building uh, type of lava where you get the, the the wide bases and the peak here and that's why they call them uh, cinder cones because it looks like an upside down ice cream cone and uh, that's what builds up the mountains uh, from on each side of it like that creating a bigger base and a, a nice little peak on them okay now I know a lot of you have always thought of uh, Mount Rainier as just a beautiful uh, picturesque uh, scenery in uh, western Washington actually it's the whole state of Washington but just can't believe that the mountain is still an active volcano but as you can see from this illustration that it has a very active hydrothermal system that uh, gets heated down here from uh, the magma chamber which really doesn't look like this but um, the heat comes up and water uh, is intruded into the volcano through uh, cracks and uh, fumaroles and stuff like that it makes its way down into the sides of the mountain into the internal structure of the mountain it gets heated it picks up gas coming up from uh, the magma chamber and we have little fumaroles here that release gas and steam 
and here this shows you all the different types of gases that come out so even though it looks like a beautiful dead volcano there it's still very much alive and uh, has a beating heart but you know you wouldn't know that but sometimes you can see in the winter time uh, even from Tacoma and uh, Seattle area that it has like a big steam cloud over the top of it that's because it's so cold up there that the hot steam coming out like that just makes a, a plume of steam over it and when the air is uh, stagnant not moving uh, it's allowed to make a, a big round steam plume and but don't confuse that with uh, the lenticular clouds that uh, occasionally form over there like great big rings uh, stacked on top of each other um, that's more to do with the height of the mountain creating its own weather patterns and stuff and uh, we get more snowfall and uh, rain over here on the western side due to the clouds come in off the uh, Pacific Ocean come across and they're so loaded with moisture it can't reach up and over the, the mountain so it dumps a lot of rain which if it's in winter time it's snow um, and creates more snowfall over here until the cloud is lighter and able to travel over the top that's why over in eastern Washington it's mostly desert land over there why western Washington is very lush and green but I just thought I'd uh, bring this in to, uh, for your attention to show you uh, that it's not really um, a dead and quiet beautiful uh, mountain okay here's a good visual uh, of steaming uh, coming out of Mount Rainier um, I'm not sure of the source if it's uh, um, from a fumarole if it has high content of uh, chemicals in it or if it's just steam coming out of uh, one of the steam vents but they've had some beautiful uh, um, ice caves uh, up near the summit in here that uh, have now uh, but now that they're no longer there because the glaciers have retreated and the, the caves have collapsed but uh, you can see here though it's a pretty good source of steam coming out of the, the mountain itself okay here's a, a video I borrowed from Nick Zentner uh, kind of a mentor to me he's one that really got me really this uh, addicted to geology watching his many videos he has out and free lectures that he gives out of uh, Hal Holmes uh, uh, auditorium and now uh, they have a new science building so I believe they're in another room but let's see if we can take a look at this on May 18th 1980 Mount St. Helens exploded in a type of eruption never witnessed before one of the largest landslides in history triggered a powerful sideways directed blast ferocious explosions followed and formed an immense mushroom cloud late that afternoon the volcano okay well that's kind of an overview I don't want to bore you guys with the whole five minute or an uh, time that he has I think it was a five minute video but uh, as you can see uh, this was a uh, May 18th the eruption of st. Helens was a very violent eruption everybody was expecting it to go vertical um, which you can almost guarantee that's how Rainier will erupt next is vertically but there's always a chance here uh, of a volcano uh, having a lateral or sideways eruption because I remember this I was 18 years old uh, living in Tacoma and man I was fixated this stuff man we're gonna have a volcano in my backyard uh, erupt and uh, which it didn't disappoint but they were noticing that the on the northwest side of the mountain um, a section of the mountain was uh, deforming and it was growing like a big lump on the side of the mountain was growing at five feet a day and that's really hellacious uh, deformation uh, occurring on the side of the mountain and a few of the geologists uh, from the USGS which later uh, went to work at the CVO down in Vancouver where they uh, set up shop for uh, St. Helens and today they're still in the same building I was down there last May uh, for the open house and they were noticing that this isn't a good sign 
And they were noticing too that there was big cracks in the side of the volcano and with the deformation, one of them, and I can't remember his name, I'm sorry about that if you're listening, um, that uh, we're not looking at a vertical eruption. There's a great possibility there's going to be a lateral uh, eruption, which it did and uh, blew down uh, prime timber uh, thousands uh, of acres, uh, square acres, 100,000 square acres of uh, trees, stripped the bark and all the branches that were all dropped uh, facing away from the, the volcano. But I just found this extremely uh, um, exciting to follow this. You know, it wiped out 57 bridges. Uh, numerous roads were wiped out. Um, but at the most part of it, it didn't have any uh, civilization around it like Mount Rainier has. That's why it poses such a great danger uh, to the area because if we have another uh, Osceola type uh, lahar, uh, it's going to repeat the same path it took uh, 5,600 years ago and come right down and wipe out Ording, Puyallup, uh, parts of Tacoma, um, Buckley, all those areas there. Uh, that was shown in the the hazard map and uh, just wreak havoc on our area that will take us quite a while to recover from but I hope that some of you guys uh, have learned some things um, please feel free to leave uh, comments with questions uh, share this to the people you know that like geology let's get this information out there uh, help our channel grow um, I don't make any money off of it as you know but I'm here to teach and educate, um, so I guess I am your YouTube professor here. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another video very shortly. Take care.